Well, hello, my name is Robert Henderson, and I'm so glad that you've chosen to join us because what I want to talk to you about is how to enter the courts of heaven. You know, the courts of heaven is something that I have been um, uh, that people know me for is something that I'm that I function in is something that I enjoy very much helping other people come into and again to help us understand something I want to say something here that I think needs to be clarified when I began to teach on the courts of heaven uh, people began to think well this is a method of prayer in fact I was teaching in a conference not too long ago and I made this statement that that the courts of heaven is not a method of praying it is a spiritual dimension and that's very important to know that because otherwise we get to thinking what we're doing is actually operating in a formula that if we do A, B, and C, we'll get D, you know, that kind of thing. But I found out that that's not true at all. That, that First of all, I found out that formulas normally do not work in the spirit realm. That, that literally it's only out of the life of God, out of the revelation we have through the spirit that we're able to, to come into the realms of the spirit. And so in Revelation chapter 8 and verse 26, the Bible says that when we don't know how to pray as we ought, the Holy Spirit helps us. He helps our weaknesses. He helps our infirmity. So the truth of the matter is, is that any dimension of prayer that we step into, it's going to be through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that we're able to function there. And so we may learn principles. We may learn concepts. We may learn certain ideas. But the truth is, is, is that only through the leading of the Spirit can we begin to function and begin to come into these realms. So let me just go back right quickly and say this again, that the court of heaven is not a method of praying. It is a dimension of the Spirit. And what that means is that when we by faith began to step into these realms, we can step into a spiritual dimension, into a spiritual realm where we can begin to function. To help us uh, get that, you need to know that Ephesians chapter uh, 2 and verse 6, it says that we are seated together with Him in heavenly places. What that is describing is a spiritual dimension. And, and what I also want you to understand is, is that um, so often we say, well, we're coming into the presence of God or the presence of God came up on me while I was praying. Well, I do believe that that does happen. But I also believe that instead of us just stepping into the presence or the presence coming up on us, what we're actually doing is stepping into a spiritual dimension that we learn how to function in. So here's what you got to get. If you're going to move into this spiritual dimension called the court of heaven, there's some secrets, there's some ideas that we can practice, but ultimately it's under the leadership of the Holy Spirit that we end up in those places uh, that, that allows us to move there. And again, to just make another statement, that, that prayer is not convincing God to do something for us. Okay, it was so many times that's what we think it is. I mean, it's amazing how that we would say, we would probably all argue and say, well, I don't believe that. But the truth is, that's what we think. We think, well, if I'll do just the right things, if I'll say the right things, if I'll cry the, uh, you know, the number of tears, if I'll whisper or I'll yell or whatever I do, then I'll get God's attention. But you got to understand that we're not trying to convince Him to do something for us. The Bible, in fact, says He knows what we have need of before we ask. So what we're... What we're saying is that we're not trying to convince him. We're actually stepping into a spiritual dimension, into a realm of the spirit where that we by faith begin to rearrange, shift, shape the spirit realm so what is in heaven can come into earth. Okay, that's a completely different concept because one, I'm trying to convince God to do something for me, but what I've just described is we are coming into an agreement with God for God's will to be done in the earth so that we can see the purposes of God uh, come to pass uh, over and in and through our lives. So, so what I want you to understand is how to step into these realms. Now, what what um, another another principle I need for you to understand is this: is that um, I believe that when we step into the into the courts of heaven, or we open up the courts of heaven, uh, that we are already a, a seated there. We are already standing there. Uh, Romans chapter five and verse two. There's a couple of scriptures I'll point out. It says that we have access by faith 
into the grace in which we stand. Okay, so whenever the Bible says there's a grace that, that we stand in, it's talking about a, a place in the spirit. It's talking about a spiritual dimension. That we have been granted a place to stand by virtue of what Jesus has done. But watch what he says. We have to access that place in which we are standing. And so we're not, tra we're not talking about uh, getting into some place through our own efforts, through our own abilities, through our own function. We've already been granted a place by, by virtue of who Jesus is and what he did. In, in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 22, it says, but we have come to Mount Zion. We have come to the city of the living God, heavenly Jerusalem, and so forth. So we're told that we are, we're already positioned. We're already uh, placed by God in a spiritual dimension. So I'm not trying to get somewhere. I'm already there. What I'm learning to do is to function from where I've already been placed. Okay, so it says, also in Hebrews chapter 10 that we have entrance into his presence through the blood of Jesus. So the whole issue is this, through what Jesus did for us on the cross, we're already positioned, we're already placed. The key is learning how to function there. Now, I'm saying all that because we have to know where to place our faith because it's faith according to Romans 5, 2, that gives us access into the place that we stand. It gives us access into the place that we've been positioned. So by faith, I began to operate in these realms. Now, Hebrews chapter 5, I'll give you several scriptures, and verse 14, it says, it says clearly there that strong meat or maturity, those who have come to maturity, belongs to those who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern both good and evil. Okay, when the Bible says senses, it's talking about your prophetic abilities. And many people think they don't have any prophetic abilities. But you need to understand, the Bible says that just like we have five senses, Okay, that we exercise our senses. That's not talking about our, our touch, our taste, our smell, our sight, or our hearing. It's not talking about those five. It's talking about the spiritual dimension, if you will, of those five. Because I believe that just like we have at least five natural senses, there are at least five prophetic senses that we have as well. In other words, you can discern what's going on in the spirit realm by what you see. You can discern by what you hear. You can discern by by the issue of taste, if you will. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is by by the equivalent of it of, of being um, uh, some kind of a discernment that you're having, by what you smell uh, uh, that you can, you can discern. Okay, but also uh, by what you feel. See, the Bible says like the priests, they would put their hands into the ether and they would feel the Urim and the Thummim. And by what they felt, they could tell what the will of God was concerning a situation. So we have at least five uh, spiritual senses, just like we have five natural senses. So the Bible says that we, by reason of use, exercise those senses to discern both good, good and evil. So here's what I do. I say, okay, Lord, your word says... That, that there is a dimension called the court of heaven. And that I, by the blood of Jesus and by what Jesus has done, I have access into that place. Okay? So based on that word, based on that understanding, I by faith began to move into that realm. Now as I am seeking to move, I'm going to give you some practicalities in just a moment, but as I am seeking to move into that realm, okay, I am paying attention to what I'm seeing. I am paying attention to what I'm hearing. I'm paying attention to what I'm feeling. I'm paying attention. I'm, 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 I'm vitally aware of, of, of what's happening in the spirit realm that I am by faith stepping into. And some would say, well, wait, I don't have any of those abilities. But here's the issue. If you are born again, you have these abilities. And I would just make that statement. If you are born again, you have these abilities. In John chapter 3 and verse 13, Jesus makes a very important statement. Like in, in his talking to Nicodemus, we look at it and we say that Jesus was telling Nicodemus how to be born again. And that's true. He was telling him how to be born again. But he wasn't telling him how to be born again so he could go to heaven after he died. Even though that is true. He was telling him how to be born again, you got to hear this, so that he could function in the spirit realm while he yet lived in the earth. 
See, that's what he was saying because in John chapter 3, verse 13, Jesus makes this statement. He said, The Son of Man is the same one who came down out of heaven, who ascends into heaven, and then watch this, who is even presently in heaven. In other words, he said, he said I'm living in two dimensions at one time. See, I'm not just living in the natural realm. I'm also living in the spirit realm. This would explain why Jesus would make statements like this. I only do what I see the Father do. That because Jesus had learned how to function in the natural and the spirit realm simultaneously, he could discern what was going on in the spirit realm, sense it, uh, 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 understand it, began to uh, uh, agree with it so that what was happening in the spirit could be made manifest in the natural. So he, he had learned how to do this. I'm saying to you that Jesus said to Nicodemus, I want you to be born again, not just so you can go to heaven when you die, but so you can encounter heaven even while you are yet alive in the earth so that you too can learn how to live in two dimensions at one time. And so here's what we do. The Bible says again, Hebrews 5.14, we by, watch this phrase, reason of use. What does that mean? That means you have to try. That means you have to step out of just the natural and say, okay, Lord, I'm going to step into a spiritual dimension here and I'm going to pay attention to what I'm feeling. I'm going to pay attention to what I'm seeing. And I'm not necessarily talking about seeing with your eyes. I'm talking about what you see uh, in, in, that, in your mind's eye, if you will, in, in, the, in the spirit. I'm going to pay attention to what I hear. I am going to let what is being heard, what is being seen, what is being felt, I'm going to let that give some direction to my life. It's very interesting. Uh, I was over in uh, Germany. I was over in, South, in, in Switzerland. Uh, and, and the guy that I was with actually lives in Germany and Switzerland and holds conferences there. And he's German speaking and all that. But he, he came from South Africa, so he spoke English as well. And not only was he leading the meetings, but he was my translator. And so while he had watched me for several meetings, teach and minister and then move in the spirit and all these kind of things. And he looked at me and he said, he said, I've, I've been watching you. And he said, he said, I, I'm amazed at, at what you do. He said, I watch you determine what's going on in the spirit by what you see by what you hear and by what you're feeling. And you can tell what's happening in the spirit by piecing all that together. And I looked at him and I said, you're exactly right. I said, you, you're, you're quite discerning. I said, you're exactly right. I pay attention to what I'm seeing. I pay attention to any word I'm hearing. And I pay attention to what I'm feeling in the Spirit. And whenever I mix all that together, I can come up with some kind of an awareness of what's happening in the Spirit realm. So why am I spending time telling you all this? Because everybody can do this. Everyone is capable of doing this. You just have to exercise your, your senses by reason of use. That the more you do it, the more you're sensitive, the more you pay attention, the, 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 the easier it becomes to actually discern that which uh, is going on in the spirit realm so that you can come into an agreement with it. Now, we all know people probably that have these tremendous seeing gifts or have these tremendous prophetic gifts, uh, you know, where that they're able to, to hear great things and discern great things. And, and, and sometimes I'm envious and jealous of those kind of people. But that's not the way God made me. So I discovered something, that I have to be faithful to use what's been given to me because the more that I use it, the easier it becomes to pick up and discern what's actually happening in the spirit realm. So I am wanting to challenge you. I am wanting to, 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 to exhort you to, to, by faith, step into these places. Why? What I mean by faith. I mean, you understand by faith, there's this realm called the court of heaven. Okay, how am I going to get into it? It's going to take you by faith, learning how to move into it in agreement with God's word and began to be sensitive to what's happening in that spiritual dimension. Okay, I want to say one other thing about this. 
In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 15, uh, sometimes when you're trying to move into the things of the Spirit, um, for instance, when we teach on like bloodline cleansing and, and different things where people say, well, I, you know, you know I, I really wish I knew what the enemy could be using against me. Because if you're familiar with the Court of Heaven teaching, we teach, you know, that there are legal things that the enemy can build cases with us against and that we have to take the blood of Jesus and undo those legal cases. And, of course, I've seen tremendous things happen in my own life with this. But sometimes when you teach this, okay, people become paranoid and they want, to, they want to find that one thing, whatever, that the enemy is using to resist them with. And here's what I tell people. Just be open to the Spirit. Listen to Him. Uh, pay attention to what the Lord might be saying. Because let me just say this before I address this. That many times when I began to pray, and this, this is what I mean by some of this. When I began to pray, there may be this nagging little thought in the back of my mind that is saying to me, God's not going to answer you, and He's not going to answer you because of this. And there's this nagging little voice in the back of my mind that's, t that's sapping faith and telling me all the reasons why God's not going to answer me. Can I tell you what that is? That's called the accuser of the brethren. So somebody says, well, what do you do with that? Well, you stop. You don't ignore it. You stop. You repent of that thing that he's accusing you with, and you ask for the blood of Jesus to speak for you. Why? Because, you're, because the reason that that thought is in the back of your head as you're making your request is because the accuser is using that against you before the, before the throne of God and in the courts of heaven. So what I do is I stop and I say, Lord, I am asking in the name of Jesus that, that any, anything that's relative to this, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to cleanse me. I ask for that voice that is being, that's speaking against me before your courts. I ask for it to be silenced in Jesus' name. I ask for your blood to speak for me, and I agree with that which your blood is. Lord, I remind you, watch this, I remind you that you are Jesus Christ the righteous, my advocate with the Father, that you are speaking in my behalf before the Father, and I'm asking that any legal case the enemy has against me concerning these thoughts, let it be revealed and let it be removed. I repent of it. I ask your blood to speak for me. I promise you that will thing will silence immediately and you will be able then to speak before the Lord with faith in your heart, with faith in your spirit. Okay, so that's really important that you know that. But the other thing that I would mention concerning that is this, is that um, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 15, the Bible says that, that uh, if you be any otherwise minded, it's talking about coming to maturity. It says God will reveal even this to you. So here's what it means. It means that if there's something else you need to know, if there's an issue you need to deal with, the Holy Spirit's going to reveal it to you. That if you need to know this. See, I watch people get all uh, bogged down, like I said earlier, in a paranoid mindset trying to find the thing the enemy is using. Listen, here's my admonition. If he doesn't reveal it to you, don't worry about it. Okay, don't try to manufacture something. Don't get paranoid. Don't get in strife. Don't, don't, don't move into these areas. Just let, just if you will, just let... Um, uh, Silence be silence, if you will. In other words, don't try to, to conjure up something. Just say, Lord, I just thank you for this. Now, the other thing I say to do in regards to this, as we're seeking to move into the courts of heaven, is to apply Colossians 2.14. Because the scripture says in Colossians 2.14 that every handwriting of ordinance that was against us, that means accusations, that was contrary to us, Jesus took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So that is a, that is one of the stated verdicts of the cross. So here's what I do. I say, Lord, I say anything that would try to resist me from coming and stand before you. I ask according to Colossians 2.14 that anything that is resisting me, anything that is standing against me, I am asking and declaring that your blood is speaking for me, Lord, so that, so that any and every voice, any and every accusation, any handwriting of ordinance that is contrary to me, that is against me, it is 
is now nailed to your cross and it is taken out of the way and it has no more relevance against me in the court of heaven. Do, do you sense that? See, when you say that, you are silencing the accuser so that you can step fully into this realm that God wants you to move into. So I want to just challenge you to by faith. See, what does it say? The Bible says it says that we come boldly before the throne of grace. I want to challenge you by faith to have confidence in his blood and all that he has done. Why? Because the blood of Jesus has granted us entrance into his court. And one more thing I would just say. Don't let someone tell you you've got to be a special person to do this. You don't have to be a special person. Number one, you are special before him because his blood has made you worthy. Okay, that's the truth. But in the sense that you have to be have special knowledge or, or be some specially gifted person to function there, you don't have to be. In fact, let me just say this to you. I have met a lot of people in what I do that are highly gifted seers. But I want you to hear something. I am not one. I, by faith, take the principles of God's Word and do what I have described to you that I do. Watch. I get as much or more breakthrough than those that are having all these encounters in the spirit realm. In fact, I sometimes question if the encounters they are having is not producing real tangible results, I sometimes have to question some of the encounters that they're having because I by faith can step into the spirit realm, understand what the word says, and by faith just start to function there, exercising my senses by reason of use. And I promise you, I have gotten and I get just as much, if not more, breakthrough than, er than these others that sometimes are claiming to have all of these different encounters. Now, I'm not being critical of those who have the encounters. I say, let it operate, let it work. Lord, let me have more. What I'm trying to get you to see is do not disqualify yourself. Do not let anything cause you to back away and say, I can't do that. I'm telling you at the word of the Lord that you are more than able, you're more than a conqueror, you're an overcomer, and God wants you to step into the courts of heaven and see these, these breakthroughs come. And I want to encourage you that even as you take the book on, uh, on unlocking the courts uh, of, through prayers and through declarations, I promise you, prayers and declarations will enable you to step into these realms when you add your faith to it. When you add your faith to it. Because, see, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 that the word preached to them did not profit them not being mixed with faith in, that, in those that heard it. So you have to add your faith. You have to step into these realms. And I want to challenge you very much to move into these dimensions. So let me pray for you. So, Father, I want to thank you right now in the name of Jesus, that it's your passion, it's your heart, that your people will move into these spiritual dimensions that you have made available to us by your blood. Thank you for it, Lord. Now we take the prophetic giftings that every one of us have and we began to develop them. We began to use them. We began to step into these dimensions. We began to take the blood and silence any accusation that's against us and we move into these realms, Lord, that you have made available to us. And we thank you, Lord, that as we do, we're not trying to convince you to do something. We are moving in agreement with you Lord, for, for heaven to shift, the spirit realm to shift, so that all that is in the heaven can manifest itself into the earth. And I thank you so much for doing this. We receive the grace and the authority and the mercy to function in these realms. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Lord, bless you. I, here, here, here's what I tell people everywhere I go. Give it a try. See, see, sometimes when they hear me teach, they're like, oh, I can't do that. No, you can't if you won't try. I promise you, give it a try. Step into these dimensions. Don't back off. In fact, I just hear this, I hear this, Nike, the, the Nike logo, just do it. Literally, just do it. Why, why, why are you going to sit around and wait for life to pass you by, your breakthrough to pass you by? I'm telling you, just do it. 
take the principles of God's Word, begin to move in faith. The Holy Spirit will help you in your weakness. He will help you in your infirmity, and He will enable you to step into these realms. And I guarantee you, you will see massive breakthrough. Why? Because God is no respecter of persons, and He will meet you as you use your faith to step into these realms. Lord bless you.